Hey there, fight fans, and welcome to the latest edition of Below the Belt Boxing. On tonight's card, the only boxer to beat Iron Mike Tyson twice. Coming up, a tale of wrecking ball knockouts, underdog rivalries, and a sickening act to score Mike Tyson's career. One of the most eagerly anticipated matches in years was set to take place in 1991 in Las Vegas between heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield and former champion Mike Tyson. The bout had to be postponed while Mike Tyson awaited the commencement of his sexual assault trial. The fight would be postponed longer than fight fans would have hoped for as Tyson was sentenced to prison after being found guilty in the case while Holyfield continued to compete in significant fights, notably his historic trilogy against Riddick Bowe. Down goes Bowe! After he was released from prison, Tyson spent time resurrecting his baddest man on the planet persona by destroying four opponents, McNeely, Mathis Jr., Bruno, and Selden. While Tyson was on the rise, knocking them out in less than eight rounds, Holyfield appeared to be on his last legs. Bo knocked him out in their third brutal fight in November 1995, and appeared exhausted against Bobby Sizz just six months later. Public opinion would suggest Tyson would easily defeat him in what would be a pay-per-view blockbuster. Tyson entered as a massive favorite, with some bookmakers having Holyfield at 25 to 1. In round one, Tyson landed a powerful blow, and Holyfield was knocked back. Tyson sank to his left, from which position he typically loaded up a left hook, but on this particular occasion startled Holyfield by landing a right cross. Tyson was restrained by Holyfield, who also used this moment to make his superior strength the first surprise of the bout. Throughout the remainder of the first round, Holyfield pummeled Tyson with a number of counter punches. Tyson punched Holyfield after the round was over, and the unfazed boxer returned the favor. Holyfield's plan for the fight became obvious in the second round when he forced Tyson against the ropes and caught him with a vicious combination. Holyfield deflected Tyson's initial blow, while the boxer tended to assault one punch at a time. He then utilized his muscle to clinch and push Tyson backwards. Tyson's power was reduced and his balance was hampered by being kept on the back foot, which allowed Holyfield to advance and score with combinations to the head. Tyson struggled to adapt as the rounds went on and found himself getting outboxed severely. Tyson delivered his greatest combination of the fight in the fifth round, and Holyfield did not falter. The sixth round would bring Tyson a cut by a headbutt from Holyfield that the referee deemed to be unintentional. Later on in the round, Holyfield caught Tyson with a left that caused him to go to the ground. Holyfield continued to dodge Tyson's advances and catch him with punches to the head. Holyfield moved forward as Tyson went at him with 15 seconds remaining in the seventh round, resulting in a forceful head-to-head -head collision. While Tyson screamed in agony and fell to his knees, the referee once more determined that the headbutt was inadvertent. The ring doctor checked Tyson, who then restrained Holyfield for the remainder of the round. Tyson proceeded to miss reckless blows and take Holyfield's counter punches during the following two rounds. A punch from Holyfield at the conclusion of the tenth round left Tyson stumbling across the ring. After pursuing him into the ropes, Holyfield struck him repeatedly with powerful strikes. Tyson was out on his feet and defenseless when the bell rang, but his corner let him out for the 11th. Tyson was swiftly forced back into the ropes by Holyfield's swift delivery of another nasty extended combo. The referee decided enough was enough and called time on the contest, giving Holyfield his most well-known upset victory in boxing history. Referee Halpern was again tasked with being the referee when the belt was signed. Tyson's management objected, claiming that they wanted a different referee for the rematch as their official justification. Tyson was dominated by Holyfield at the start of the fight. The first three rounds were won by Holyfield who startled Tyson with an overhand right shot in the first round. 
but Tyson battled back and pushed Holyfield backwards right afterwards. Tyson was the result of a headbutt, causing a significant cut over his right eye. In the first fight between the two competitors, Tyson had constantly complained about being headbutted. Referee Mills Lane declared the headbutts were inadvertent and not penalized after examining the footage. Just before the third was about to start, Tyson walked out without his gum shield. He was told by Lane to go back to his corner and insert it. After placing in his mouthpiece, Tyson moved back into position and the fight continued. Tyson launched a fierce onslaught to start the third round. When both fighters clinched with 40 seconds left in the round, Tyson positioned his head on Holyfield's shoulder and bit Holyfield on the right ear. Tyson spat out a chunk of Holyfield's ear cartilage onto the canvas. In excruciating pain and dripping blood from the wound, Holyfield leapt into the air. When Lane intervened, Tyson was able to rush Holyfield from behind and push him into a corner. Lane divided the two and then turned around to check on a furious Holyfield. For the following few minutes, the combat would be postponed. Because of the bite, Lane was going to disqualify Tyson and call the match off. The ringside doctor was brought in to check on the champion. Once the doctor gave Holyfield the all clear to resume the fight, Lane made the decision to let it go. But not before docking Tyson two points. Tyson would go on to bite the left ear of Holyfield after another clinch. Holyfield flung his hands about to escape the grip and leapt back. Holyfield was only left with a scar from Tyson's second bite. After the second bite, Lane did not break up the fight. Instead, the two fighters fought until the allotted time had passed. The match was stopped once more when the fighters had returned to their corners and the second bite had been found. I'll tell you what, this is unbelievable. When the fight was called off, Tyson rampaged through Holyfield's corner while he and his trainer Brooks were still inside. Holyfield was encircled by security in his corner and Tyson was led back there by security. After the fight, Holyfield claimed to the media that Tyson bit him because he was going to be knocked out and decided to lose via disqualification. The State Athletic Commission suspended Tyson's boxing license and levied a $3 million fine for biting Holyfield on both ears. In 1998, the commission decided to reinstate Tyson's license following an appeal. We pay homage to all the boxers on this channel. Both Tyson and Holyfield were true warriors of the sport and both deservingly get our respect. If you've not done so already, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in to Below the Belt Boxing, YouTube's newest boxing channel on the rise.